is up with this weather? June 6th, summer should be here already. Nothing, just the same cold, rainy bullshit every day. These guys are good though. Nice work. Thank you, man. If you're, a, if you're a regular viewer of this show, you know just how much my happiness and good mood and just general positivity is tied to the weather. You'd also know that all winter long, I've been waiting for summer. I'm trying to illustrate a point here, which is that it rains a disproportionate amount of days in New York City, but as I'm making charts and then looking at the data, I'm realizing it rains on average 11 to 15% of the days, kind of making me feel like a little bit of a bitch for complaining about it so much. Maybe I should have looked this up before I did this whole scene. So with it pouring rain outside, with it pouring rain outside, today seems like an opportune day to make a video I've wanted to make for a very long time called I wanted to explain to you, the audience, exactly how I make my vlogs. Like what I see as the recipe for creating these videos. First, a quick history lesson. I started vlogging in March of 2015. Now, before I started vlogging, vlogging was typically individuals carrying around like point and shoot cameras that were sort of documenting their day into a camera. It was a much smaller genre back then and it was pretty linear. Day begins here, day ends there, come with me throughout my day. I found the genre fascinating. I was obsessed with like Ben Brown, I was obsessed with Fun for Louie, I was obsessed with BF versus GF, Charles Trippy was great. I think what fascinated me the most about the whole genre was the idea of using your, your life as a narrative for a daily series. Now, when I made my HBO series, this is a series I did with my big brother Van, it was on HBO in 2010, we made it in 2008, that's 10 years ago. My brother and I used our lives as a backdrop for a TV show, but it wasn't so daily, it wasn't so episodic, instead we kind of plucked interestingness out of our lives, shared that interestingness as tiny little stories, strung those stories together and called that a TV show episode. So on one end of the spectrum, we've got your daily vloggers in 2014, 2015, sharing every aspect of their daily lives into a camera. And on the other end of the spectrum, we've got this TV show that I made a decade ago, where I share little stories from my lives as short movies. So I went to Belgium in 2015. This is the month before I started vlogging. And I wanted to test out one thing. What would happen if I sort of vlogged about my trip but instead of talking into a camera, I used really precise cinematography. What would happen? Movie-like cinematography, but it was just me going about my daily life, going into my hotel room, coming out of my hotel room. And I love that video. That video worked, you should watch it, it's linked below. And that got me super excited. And that's when I made the decision that on, on my birthday, 2015, I would start daily vlogging. It wouldn't be this all day long. Instead, I wanted to figure out how to make something that felt a lot more like a movie every day. So that was the thinking, that's what went through my head prior to starting to vlog. So with that understanding, here are the foundational principles that I apply to almost every episode of, of this daily, almost daily, vlog. Number one, the most important thing, is of course the story. But what is a story? Here's a super basic breakdown of a story, and every good story follows this rule. That is the rule of a three-act narrative. You've got a beginning, you've got a middle, you've got an end. Setup, conflict, resolution. Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water, act one. Jack fell down and broke his crown, act two. Jill came tumbling after, act three. Set up, conflict, resolution. Now in some episodes that's super, super, super literal. 
For example, my all-time favorite episode that I've ever made of this vlog, which is called My All-Time Greatest, is such a literal example of setup conflict resolution. It just felt so good to make that. There was a setup, here's what happened, there was a conflict, oh my god, what's the outcome gonna be? And then there was a resolution, happy ending. But that's not always so literal in every episode, but I strive for that in every episode because that is what's at the core of a well-told story, and a story is what drives any video like this. And that right there was sort of the promise or the deal that I made with myself was never an obligation to share with you the intimacies of every day of my life. This isn't a journal, but instead, could I find every day in my life a three-act narrative to share? Now, a couple of the more granular aspects. I always found it kind of hard to watch non-stop shaky camera vlogs. It was disorienting, it was always a little claustrophobic. So, so what I try to do is have an equal amount of handheld, locked off shots, locked off means on a tripod like this, and then establishing shots. The wide shots, those establishing shots, let you know where I am, so it feels more like you're here with me. These locked off shots let you, the viewer, forget about the camera for a second and focus on what I'm saying and the environment that I'm in. And then the handheld shots like this enable you to sort of feel the spontaneity and the urgency that is whatever's taking place in my daily life. Hardware, as in what cameras I use. I have a simple rule for when it comes to hardware, and that is always use the very best camera you have at your disposal. So right now I'm shooting this on my big camera. I'm shooting it in 4K with a nice wide lens. This is a perfect shot. I've got a light right there. I'm trying to make myself look good. This is the best I have right now. But when I'm out running in the morning and I want to film my runs, the best I have is my cell phone. I keep a point and shoot in my backpack in case I don't have this big camera because the point and shoot is a little bit more dynamic than just the cell phone. So I'm not beholden to any certain kind of hardware or any certain quality of hardware. It's what I have access to. Cinematography part two. Hold the camera steady. No one wants to watch super shaky cinematography. It hurts your brain, it's hard to see what's going on, it's not pleasurable for, for you, the viewer, and it's not easy for me, the editor, to put it together. If it's super shaky, if it's nonsensical, it goes straight in the trash. What's up, Marlon? I almost dropped your pockets, man. I'm making a movie, Marlon, about how to make, how I make my vlogs. Really? Yeah, like, it's not so much a tutorial, but it's a little bit of like, I don't know, aspects of it I've never really shared. Right. So, you know what you should have done? You should have sat, sat with me and... Um, Taught you. Uh, sit with me and, 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 and teach me how to do it. Okay. The next version of Casey Neistat's Vlogging Secrets will be with Marlon where I teach him how to vlog. Cinematography part three, time lapses and, and drones. Here's something very important. No one gives a sh about your stupid time lapses, your stupid drone shots. That's something I have to remind myself on a daily basis. That kind of cinematography only works if it's serving a greater purpose. And for me, it serves two purposes. One is transitional. So you'll notice sometimes like I'm outside wrapping up a scene where I'm doing something on my skateboard. The next scene I'm in my studio I'm doing something completely different. And in between there might be a, a beautiful drone shot of the city or might be a beautiful time lapse of the city. I'm using it to get me from one scene or one aspect of the story to the next. As that, it's an incredibly effective tool. The other place where it works is to show the audience a broader sort of, a broader image of where you are and what's taking place in time. Drones in particular are great for that. I'm at a hotel on a cool beach and it doesn't really work pointing my camera. The drone can give you context that otherwise couldn't. If that kind of ambitious, beautiful cinematography doesn't have a relationship with the narrative, even if it's just a little relationship, it feels out of place and it gets boring very, very fast. Now, there is a lot more depth and complexity to it than that. Things like, where does being positive all the time start to just sound like total BS, where people don't believe it? Things like, when I'm feeling down and I want to share with you the audience and I'm struggling with something, how do I do that in a way that you actually care? Because we've all got our own problems, why should I give a about yours. Things like consistent narratives and you know if I'm on a trip that's five days long how do I make a five day episode arc about essentially the same subject. So there's a lot of depth to this but I hope that this serves as a good sort of introduction into some of the thinking that I've had as I do this vlog. I want to end this first kind of instructional sharing video by saying this. Probably the most important thing to succeeding, whether it's in the vlog game, the YouTube game, or in the creative space at all is this. You have to have your own thing. 
So if you follow this video perfectly and you make the most perfect Casey vlogs, you will have failed before you've begun. They don't want to see your Casey vlogs. They want to see your, your vlogs. They want to see what you can bring to the table. My favorite thing in the world is seeing how YouTubers are able to iterate and build on other YouTubers' styles and sentiments and ideas until they make something that's uniquely theirs. Those are the YouTubers that really succeed. So the most important rule is be original. And that whole recipe that I just outlined, that was what I thought I could uniquely bring to YouTube and help find success with it. <sighs> All right, please let me know below if this is super interesting or absolutely fucking boring. I'm outside now. This is the beginning of Act 3. Sorry if you remember, but it all... It's so unnecessary. I don't know if you remember, but in all the episodes where I talk about having gone to Afghanistan as a journalist and connecting with these pararescue jumpers, there was one guy that I met who's been in this vlog before named Roger Sparks. Oh, okay. That's Casey, that's me. That's Roger right there. That's the man. That's the PJ. And there he is again. That's Roger there. This is an awesome plaque that, that these guys made for me. Amazing guys. Roger was a part of this amazing campaign to restore coral reefs. They made a big movie about it. That's the movie screening I'm going to tonight. It looks incredible. Going to show the support and to see this great movie. Is this the right place? Oh! Oh, awesome, Roger. What are you doing? So you guys might remember Roger here. This is Roger's big movie. This is your big movie. Watch uh, how humble he is. It's not a movie about me. It's about a cause, about uh, helping special operations veterans and helping the ocean. Most humble man on planet Earth. It's wonderful to see you, Roger. Oh, yeah. And congratulations. Oh, thank Casey. Thank you, guys. The movie is about to start. <clears throat> Ocean is really the last frontier. Um, surreal combat that uh, can't cannot really be articulated. His extraordinary efforts under direct immediate danger to his own life resulted in saving four American lives, one host nation civilian, and returning four soldiers killed in action to their families. So that movie was about taking former soldiers, bringing them to help repair coral reefs by like scuba diving, and that being therapy for the soldiers, and then also a way to start to repair the uh, damaged environment. So it's like helping the earth and helping these former soldiers. Incredible story. Incredible story. Roger's also an incredible guy. I'm going to bed now.